Focusing your build on a single skill or a single element is common practice in Diablo 2, but what if you truly obsessed over using only one element and nothing else? I decided to give this a try and challenged myself to beat the game on normal difficulty with only poison damage, and not allowing myself to deal even a single point of non-poison damage. So what class and skill to pick for this challenge? Well, Poison Nova is a great skill that only deals poison damage, but it's a level 30 skill and good luck getting there without dealing damage. The Amazon's Poison Javelin skills are accessible earlier, but the Javelin itself carries physical damage, so that is a no-go. I eventually decided on the Druid, simply because he has access to Poison Creeper as a level 1 skill, which happens to only deal poison damage. In the end, I don't think it was much of a decision really. But I was immediately faced with the first problem of the playthrough. I still didn't have access to poison damage at level 1. So how was I going to get the very first skill point into Poison Creeper if I couldn't deal any damage? Well my first plan was to go around the Bloodmoor and open chests over and over, looking for a druid pelt with plus 1 to Poison Creeper. A very clever plan I thought, but it turns out that even the wolf head, which is the lowest level druid pelt, always has a minimum required level of 3, regardless of its stats. But I had another trick up my sleeve. I went into the cold plains and started hunting for shrines. I was looking for a poison shrine, which spreads a poisonous cloud around it on activation, which will hopefully kill enough enemies to get me up to level 2. The poison shrine is rare, and it took me quite a few resets of looking through both the cold plains and the stony field, but I eventually found one. I did not want to have to find another one, so I made sure to herd a big pack of enemies before activating the shrine. This was way more than enough, and I leveled up to level 2 with a good margin. And finally, I was able to put my first skill point into Poison Creeper. Step 1 completed, and I could finally start making my way through Act 1. Now the Poison Creeper is by no means what I would classify as a good summon, but against early enemies and by putting a lot of points into the skill, the damage output is actually pretty decent, and if it wasn't for the... Uh, challenges of getting a single AI controlled unit to go where you want it to, I would consider this to be a really good early leveling build. And because the damage was as good as it was, most of the first act was quick, easy and uneventful. I did eventually find a druid pelt with poison creeper in the tower on the way to the countess. A nice find even though it could have been a higher roll. I stuck around and did some more countess runs for basic runes and experience and I ended up finding a better druid pelt from the same armor rack. Unfortunately it was ethereal, which was a bummer because I ended up tanking enemy hits a lot of the time to help the poison creeper find its targets. But as I was moving on, a random enemy had dropped another druid pelt on the ground, right next to me, and that turned out to be a non-ethereal druid pelt with plus 2 poison creeper. What a nice surprise. After gathering a few more levels, I ran over the countess like she was a regular faller. Even Griswold was a pushover. Well, he was still tanky as ever, so it took a little while, but it was safe and easy. The rest of Act 1 was smooth sailing, and before I knew it, I arrived at Andoriel's doorstep. I was a little bit concerned about this fight. Not only is Andoriel quite resistant to poison damage, even in normal difficulty, but she's also our first battle against a real boss, and in case you didn't know, bosses deal 400% damage to summons. I made sure to clear out the area of any other enemies before even attempting the fight. I headed into Andoriel's throne room at level 15, almost 16, and with a level 17 poison creeper. Gearwise, I was using a wand with a tiny bit of poison resist, since nothing else I had found was even remotely useful for this challenge. The only really good piece of gear being the druid pelt I found earlier. I did manage to gamble a pair of magic find gloves and boots though, in hopes of finding some better gear. I started the fight by trying to lure Andoriel out of her throne room, instead of running deeper into it. Right away I could tell that the damage was quite nice, surprisingly good even, so it seemed like it would work out as long as I could survive. I employed the skillful tactic of running around in circles while my summon did the heavy lifting, and while it took a while to whittle her down, I defeated her on the first try. And as a delightful surprise, she dropped a unique ring when she died. It turned out to be a nagel ring, and quite a good roll on the magic find too. What a great find this early on. And with the rogue's camp being saved, it was time to travel east. Greetings, honored traveler. Before even leaving the town of Act 2, I did some power shopping to upgrade my magic find, and L6 had quite a nice pair of gloves for sale. I coupled that with a pair of boots from Farah, as well as a breastplate with three open sockets in which I put all of my topuses. This put me at over 100% magic find even before starting Act 2, hoping for some good loot along the journey. 
The poison creeper damage was still holding up strong, so I rushed on and quickly gathered the Horadric cube. I also collected the Staff of Kings, as well as the Claw Viper amulet without any problems. Act 2 did not produce any notable moments for the most part, but in one of the fake tombs while farming some experience, my poison creeper died for the first time to a unique reveler. Around the same time, I put the final skill point into Poison Creeper. So this is as tanky as the Poison Creeper is going to get. I can continue to increase the damage output though, by putting points into the Poison Creeper synergy, Rabies. And besides, lack of damage was still not a problem, far from it. Then, it was time to face Duriel. While Duriel can be a pain in the ass, especially in normal, I wasn't too worried about this fight to be honest. He could take down the vine in 3-4 hits, but thanks to being able to resummon the Poison Creeper as long as I had mana, and the fact that I didn't have to stand still to do damage to him, the fight was decided as soon as it started. No good drops this time unfortunately, and shortly after, we set sail for the jungle of Act 3. I am not a fan of the third act in Diablo 2, so I usually try and run past enemies as much as I can, and this time was no different only stopping for big packs of enemies, or enemies that I couldn't run past. The running in circles tactic still worked, but enemies in Act 3 are fast, so I took a lot more hits than previously. I proceeded to collect an eye from the spider cavern, a brain from the flayer dungeon, and a heart from the sewers. I also found a unique weapon in the flayer dungeon. It was a gleam scythe, which isn't that good of a weapon, but maybe the 30 mana is at least slightly useful to me. Maybe. I continued on to Travancore, which I was a little bit worried about beforehand because their Hydras often melt my mercenary and my summons in my playthroughs. They did however make the mistake of clumping up together on a balcony, and since I can summon the vine from afar, it turned out to be not very dangerous at all. In addition, their Hydras also seemed to have a hard time hitting the Poison Creeper. I cleaned up the last of them and combined Kalim's Flail with the Eye, Brain and the Heart which somehow makes a flail of organs to strike a magical orb with, so that a staircase appears down to a dungeon. I feel like I've maybe missed some lore by ignoring the NPC dialogue over the past 20 years. I made my way to the bottom of the dungeon and cleared out all council members before approaching Mephisto. I started off trying to cheese him by using the Motric, but if I stood far away enough so that Mephisto didn't cast spells on me, the Poison Creeper would teleport back to me instantly, so I had to fight him the old fashioned way, by which I mean running around in circles while he slowly dies from poison damage. At this point, bosses were starting to take damage really really slowly, but after several minutes I defeated the Lord of Hatred and took the portal to Act 4. Damage was still good and enemies still kinda dumb, so the beginning of Act 4 didn't pose much of a challenge, so with a quick detour to collect the two skill points from Isuel, which by the way took almost as long as Mephisto to kill, and the Hellforge for some soccer balls, I shortly found myself in the Chaos Sanctuary. And here things started to get a bit more dangerous. Between slowing curses and a lot of magic projectiles, I couldn't really run circles around enemies anymore and I came really close to dying here. But by slowing down a bit and approaching more carefully, I made short work of the seal bosses, starting with Vizier, then Lord Disease, and even Infector of Souls was no match for the mighty Poison Creeper. The Diablo fight however, was a different story. It started out as any other fight, with me trying to run around and waste the boss's time while the Poison Creeper made the enemy green. Diablo's attacks are very dangerous, but not too hard to dodge. But as I say that, I get stuck on the edge of his platform for a second, which is enough for him to completely evaporate my health pool. I kept running around Diablo for a while, and for some reason he didn't seem to be able to hurt my Poison Creeper at all, not even with his AoE attacks. I have no idea how or why that happens, but this basically reduced the fight to only dodging his attacks and being patient. Or so I thought, because several minutes into the fight, he cast his Bone Prison spell on me for the first time, and once I couldn't run, I didn't stand a chance. Well. I could have for dying a few times and it seemed like he used that spell quite rarely, so I decided to keep going. But after that point, he started using his Bone Prison spell much more frequently, and I kept dying and dying. After a while I stopped going back to the slaughter. He had still about half his health left, so this fight would be going on for quite a while. I could probably have beaten him eventually by setting up portals and dying over and over, but that just didn't feel right. So I decided to step back and see if I could instead upgrade my character to stand a better chance of surviving his attacks. I went back to the Countess to farm an additional railroad, putting me at 4 in total. I put 3 of them in the cube to make an orc rune, and together with the Tal rune, 
I made the Ancients pledge runeward in a shield, giving me a massive boost to my resistances. I also made a stealth runeward in a body armor, and while it doesn't provide any huge benefit, it should at least be more useful than the 27% magic find I was using before. I did some more power shopping and found a belt with 30% lightning resist. And then I grinded out a couple more levels for two additional skill points. I put one of them into Werebear and one into Lycanthropy, which would give me a big boost to my health pool. With these upgrades, I managed to reach max lightning resist and just 3% shy of max fire resist. That should really help against Diablo spells. And when I entered Werebear form, my health pool doubled from 300 to 600. I was ready to give Diablo another try. I went back to Diablo and decided to try and tank his attacks right away to see if my upgrades made any difference. And they sure did. His red lightning in particular still really hurts, but it's not like I have to tank everything. I can still run around. Shortly after he did imprison me, so now I was put to the real test. And with my new defensive upgrades and some potion shugging, I outlasted his bone prison. From there on it was just a game of patience and refilling my potion supply as necessary. And after almost 10 minutes of fighting, Diablo went down. And on to the final act. I always liked starting Act 5 after having killed Diablo. Coming out of the Chaos Sanctuary, the initial battlefield of Act 5 feels like a reward. There are plenty of monsters here, they're not as dangerous, and they give a lot of experience. Eldritch dropped a yellow wand, which had some really nice resistances on it. It wasn't super useful at the moment, but it was surely more useful than the mana on the Gleam Scythe I was still using. A funny thing that happened was that I could not save the barbarian prisoners, because the prison door is immune to poison, as is the barricades on the walls. Luckily for me, that's just a side quest, but sorry barbarians, I'm moving on. But shortly after, I didn't find it so funny anymore when I encountered a full wall blocking off the road. I went back and forth along this wall in several passes, but there was no opening that didn't require me to destroy a breakable, but poison immune, part of the wall. I even tried standing next to the door, hoping a catapult shot would hit me and maybe damage the door. My wish was eventually granted, but the door remained unharmed. So was the run over? Well, not quite. Maybe I could find another way to traverse the wall. I went back to Act 2 and spent a good 15 minutes there before realizing Drognan doesn't sell what I'm looking for. But after not too long in Act 3, Ormus offered to sell me what I was looking for. A staff with teleport charges. I returned to Act 5, equipped the staff and teleported through the blockade. And I made sure to give the door a smug look before moving on. Not much else happened for a while in Act 5. Damage was still decent, though the wine started dying more frequently when facing unique or champion boss packs. I eventually arrived at the Ariat Summit. To prepare for the fight, I tried gambling the rest of my gold on clubs, hoping to get one with plus one to druid skills or druid summoning skills, but I had no such luck. To be honest, I'm not even sure if clubs can spawn with those skills at this level. I also located a skill shrine and pre-buffed my poison creeper before fighting the ancients, and the damage difference from just two additional skill points was quite significant, boosting my poison creeper damage with almost 200. The fight started and I was able to separate two of them right away. Apart from not dealing damage very fast, it seemed like it would be a rather easy fight, especially since the double thrower decided to throw all his axes into the pilnar next to me, and the leap attacker decided it was more fun to use normal attacks. As I said, it wasn't fast, but Korlik was eventually worn down without too much trouble. Unfortunately, my poison creeper seemed to be about as smart as Madoc, and neither could attack the other when I was standing behind the pillar so I had to walk into his line of sight. I walked slightly too far north and caught the attention of the final ancient, and oh god did he dish out some damage. While the fight started out looking very easy, that all changed when Talik joined in. I was able to take down Madoc relatively easily, but even when he was alone, Talik dealt a lot of damage and also seemed to be way more poison resistant than the other two. And remember that I can't go back to town to refill my potions, since opening a TP resets the Ancients, so I had to navigate carefully to not run out of potions. Luckily, he still wasn't the smartest NPC, so I could for the most part have him fight my poison creeper at a safe distance. 
The whole Ancients fight took about 20 minutes, but Talik was eventually defeated and I was allowed to enter the Worldstone Keep. I rushed for the throne room and prepared for the final stretch of the game. Everything went smoothly until the second wave of minions in Bale's throne room. I had completely forgotten that Akmal the Cursed is immune to poison, so what now? Being an avid shopper, I went to town and looked for a wand with lower resist charges. To be honest, I'm not even sure if this breaks Akmal's poison immunity, but even without it, he would still have really really high poison resist even after breaking him. And since I needed a couple more levels just to give it a try, I decided on another, slightly cheesier tactic. You see, in order for Bale to move on and spawn the next wave of minions, you actually do not need to kill every monster in the throne room. The throne room just needs to be empty of living enemies, or undead enemies I guess. So if I could just lure him out of the throne room, I could potentially skip him altogether. At first, he didn't show any signs of wanting to move, just standing back and taking shots at me whenever I got close enough. But eventually he started running at me like a madman and didn't stop until we were well out of the throne room. The third wave was no problem. The council members died fairly quickly and thanks to my maxed fire resist I didn't take much damage in return. The fourth wave started off a bit scary when I got surrounded by the spawning monsters almost killing me in the process. But I made it out alive and soon after the wave was cleared. The final wave was another story. They didn't take much damage and their stunning knockback attacks was annoying to say the least. I got trapped up on the throne and couldn't escape so they got me once. When I got back I kept out on the open floor so I could keep moving around, and while it wasn't much, at least they seemed to be taking damage. After a few minutes however, nothing seemed to have happened to their health bars. If anything, it seemed like they have gained health back faster than the poison lowered it, so I decided to try and lure them out of the throne room as well. I lured them out successfully and used my teleport staff to sneak back in without them following me. I might have been able to beat them normally and it did feel kinda cheesy to skip two waves but I didn't feel like another 20 plus minute grind right now. Then Bale had his last laugh and invited me back to his place to take a look at the world stone. Even before going in I felt fairly confident in the Bale fight. It turns out that if you don't care about his mana burn or his frozen wave spell that knocks you back it's really not that annoying. Sure it took damage quite slowly, but this fight was nothing compared to the ancients. I was never in any real danger of dying either. And after maybe 10 minutes or so of slowly turning him green over and over, Bale was defeated. And just like that, I had defeated the prime evils and saved Sanctuary. Or who was I to take credit for this? It was all thanks to Vine, the level 22 poison creeper. Well done buddy, you're the true hero of Sanctuary.